James Cargo Motorcycle Shipping, sponsors Under the Visor. I'm Nathan Millward, um, 34. Ride motorbikes since I was 12. Oh, motorbike. So, and then uh, I rode it home from Australia on a on a little 105 Australian post bike, CT 110, seven horsepower, 37 mile per hour cruising speed. And then uh, so I did Sydney to London, 23,000 miles, nine months. Um, 18 countries and then uh, spent some time in England and then carried on, shipped the bike to New York, flew, flew the bike to New York and then rode across to, uh, across to the west coast then up to Alaska. So I guess the trip was effectively Sydney to Alaska. Uh, so 33,000 miles, 35,000 miles. Frustration, anger, I was very angry, I was very frustrated. Um, I would got a motorbike and I needed to go home because the visa was expiring and uh, a relationship had not worked in Australia. So instead of... Um, Going off on a med, mad mental rage, well I did, I suppose I, I rode home in a mad mental rage. And I don't uh, think it matters, I, I think there's, there's too many people even asking that question, I don't think it's even a relevant question. It's a, a bike is a bike and, and some are more appropriate than others and some are more appropriate for some situations than others. But I, I think you just got to take what, what you feel comfortable on and what's right for you at the time. I only took the posty bike because that's what I got, that's all I could afford. It suited my budget, it suited... I set off with so much dis just frustration that uh, transferred into forward motion. So if I could have done 150 miles an hour home to Australia, home to England, I would have ridden at 150 miles an hour. Thankfully, the bike capped me at 37. So I could ride as fast and as hard as I wanted, but I was still only doing 37. So for me at that time, it was a perfect bike. And I wouldn't have wanted to do it on anything else. It made it affordable. Uh, it, it helped me blend in. It helped me meet people. It was great in the capacity of that trip. Riding that bike across America was miserable because you couldn't go keep up with traffic. It fed you down to all the side roads, to the, uh, the suburbs of the cities. You couldn't enjoy America because you were sort of hamstrung by the bike and its speed and its limitations. And you know, any bike would have been better. Any bike with a bigger engine would have been better than that one. Uh, you know, so to go, f go up into Alaska, it was better because there's less traffic, less trucks, and, and so you can sort of slow down and enjoy the scenery of Alaska and, and the Yukon. Because motorcycling's in a bad state at the minute. We haven't got enough young people coming through. Um, 10, 15 years' time, there's not going to be the people to support the industry. And that's worrying. And I think the problem is because motorcycling is so fragmented, even the divisions within motorcycling, you know, the sports bikes, the cruisers, the adventure bikes, they've all they all sat apart from each other and then within the adventure market you've got you know we're still crying over is a gs an adventure bike i mean does it who gives a shit like a bike's a bike so i think the sooner people drop all that nonsense the better really and just accept that we need to get more people on bikes because without more people on bikes we're not going to have a bike industry so i think people just should shut up arguing on forums and just get out riding and and, and just be nice to each other and, and be grateful that all the people are riding different bikes so it's just nonsense at the minute. That's all I've got to say on that. Um, I was very fortunate. I got to India, and um, I got to India. I was almost broke in India. Uh, I couldn't get my Iranian visa, so it was great having to force me through northern Pakistan into China, where I'd need a guide. The guide had been quoted at two thousand dollars to get me into Kyrgyzstan. It was at that time that I got approached by an Australian publisher who'd happened to read a snippet in a newspaper in the Sydney Morning Herald about me riding my bike home from uh, Australia. So they got in touch, said, look, we've seen your trip in the newspaper. It sounds interesting. Have you thought about writing a book? So, uh, and at the same time, if you sign your contract, we'll pay you in advance. I'm in, I'm in India, need money. I get a book deal, I sign it, you know, I sign it straight away and the $3,000 $3, I got as an advance paid for China. So it was a very fortuitous, lucky, you know, break that I got. So the book, so when I got home, I had the book to write. I was contractually obliged to write a book, so I had to write a book whether I wanted to or not. Sometimes I didn't want to write a book, but it, you know, it had become an obligation, and I, you know, I ended up writing it. Had I, did I had had I had the choice, I probably wouldn't have written it, but because I'd already took the money and paid for the trip, I had to write it. Did you enjoy uh, the process? No, the book writing is a miserable process. Um, it, it's it's draining. It's confrontational. You know, you can either pretend to be the person you, you'd like to be, or you can try and represent an honest... You can try and cut, cut, cut away the, the meat of it and just get to the bones of the truth. And that's very... You're basically stripping yourself of all the bullshit lies about... You know, I don't know, you're just trying to get to you, who you are in the story, as it, as it actually was. And so it's, it's very... Yeah, it's isolating. And it drives you a bit crazy. You know, you'll spend two weeks locked in a... I had a right, I bought a shed. 
and I, I, I got a little desk. It got no windows at the bottom of my parents' garden. And I'd just sit in that shed for like weeks on end, trying, trying to say the right words, right way to say it, second guessing myself, second guessing what the reader would want. You know, so you finally emerge from that shed and you can't, you can't even communicate. You, uh, you just can't, you, 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 your mind's gone. So book writing is not a pleasurable process, but sometimes, you know, it's a good, it's a good one. It, it, it helps you make sense of what happened, really. Sometimes that's good. Not always, but I think, you know, writing a book makes sense when you feel you've got something to say. If you've got nothing to say, there's no point writing a book. Because the, the trips themselves are just trips. It's, it's just riding a motorbike a long way, which there's nothing really that interesting about that, really. It's just, yeah, I went here, I woke up, I slept, I rode. I woke up, I slept, I rode. You know, there's nothing really that interesting about trips. Um, but I felt the whole reason for doing that second trip, um, I felt there was some. I had more to say, like a conclusion to the first book, really. So that's why I've, I've, I've got, you know, I've gone through the process of writing a second one. James Cargo Motorcycle Shipping sponsors Under the Visor.